How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be disassembling the Kohler CH23 engine on the Walker rear bagger riding lawnmower. In the previous video, I took you through the steps on how to properly diagnose an engine that burns oil. We then used a cylinder leak down tester to confirm that this engine does in fact have a blown head gasket. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend watching that first just to get an idea of how we ended up here. I will link that video in the top right of your screen as well as in the description down below. But if you haven't watched that video, here's a brief recap to get you caught up. So I've now cranked it up to 40 PSI from my compressor and you guys can see we're only at about 12 PSI on my cylinder and there's clearly air leaking. The air is simply coming out of just the head and chances are this engine just has a blown head gasket. So a little update, in order to replace the head gasket, I have to remove obviously the front cylinder head, which means that I have to unbolt the intake manifold from this cylinder head, which means that I have to remove the front cover here. Now Kohler was smart because they did install what's known as an access panel shown here on the diagram, which will allow you to remove the two intake manifold bolts from the cylinder head. However, I would still highly recommend removing or at the very least loosening the front plastic cover and you'll see why later on in this video. On this whole front plastic cover, there's two bolts here, there's two bolts over there, there's the fuel pump bolts. I've then come to the back side of the machine and there's this like skid plate in behind here, just pretty much keeps dirt from the tires kicking up onto the engine. And there's two eight millimeter bolts on this side. So from up top of the engine, if we come down around to the side, the bolt in question is that guy right in there. It's an eight millimeter bolt and there's hardly any room to get a ratchet in there. I may have to end up using one of these universal joints for my quarter inch socket just so that I can get in there on an angle and then hopefully that works. You guys can see that I've taped off the carburetor just to limit the amount of dirt and debris that goes in there. I put the throttle all the way into the lowest position and then I put the choke on full so that the throttle plate under here is closed and then the choke plate is also closed. And then I went a step further and put some Gorilla Tape over the top so that absolutely nothing goes in the carb because I know that this engine runs and I don't wanna to have to do a carb work after I do the cylinder head. So a little update here, I went ahead and pushed down on this idler pulley so that I could disconnect this little drive belt and that allowed me to go in from the side here with uh, just a quarter inch ratchet. And I managed to get the bolt out. So now it's loose enough to the point where I can just remove it with my fingers. You know, this thing is still gonna be tight. So on the back of the engine case here, there was that lower bolt. It turns out there's one at the front as well. And luckily enough, I was able to take my ratchet underneath and little by little, I was able to get the bolt out right there. So I went ahead and removed the access panel. So with the combination of this outside shroud loose and the access panel open, I should be able to pull this back enough to be able to see where I'm putting my socket set or whatever they use to secure the intake manifold. And then I should be able to just go through the front here in order to unbolt it. So here's the access panel. That's what it looks like there and I was able to get the two intake manifold bolts out. So the access panel allowed me to remove those bolts, but you still have to be able to pull this back far enough to the point where you can go ahead and separate your cylinder head from the intake manifold itself, which is right down there. You guys can see it, that little aluminum piece that's sticking out there. So the next plan of action, this side's done. I'm moving on to that side. If we look here, there is a heat shield right there. I'm gonna have to remove that one. And then the two exhaust bolts are gonna have to be removed. Okay, so the heat shield's now unbolted. My exhaust for the front cylinder is unbolted. But in order to move this, because the exhaust is bolted into this whole housing here, and in order to remove this, I have to unbolt my rear muffler here. So I've gone ahead and taken off the nuts on that side and I'm just using my universal joint. Again, these things really come in handy to get into a tight little spot like that. These are just 13 mil that I'm using to remove those. Sorry if this isn't really the most entertaining video, but uh, this is some of the stuff that I do and uh, I just wanted to document the process of this one. It's uh, kind of an interesting one for anyone else that has one of these. So I've got all of my head bolts loose. I have this one here removed. That was just affixed under the bolt so I don't have to unplug it. The bolt down here though is hitting this pulley but it comes up far enough to the point where I think all of the threads are out. So I should in theory once I get the other bolts out, just be able to pull the head out like this without having to remove this whole pulley system here because 
it's probably going to be a lot more work. So I think that I should be okay. And then when I'm ready to reinstall the cylinder head, I think I might be able to put the head gasket onto the cylinder, put the bolt through, and then kind of lower that in all in one piece. And in order to get these top bolts out, you're going to have to remove your rockers. So I've unbolted the eight millimeter bolt and there's going to be a plate underneath it with that bolt. We're just going to simply pull up on that. Then I can go ahead and do the same for the other side and then get my bolts out. So you can see that clearance issue there. Now I've just gone ahead and laid out my parts here. So I have the exhaust rocker and push rod here. And then I have the intake side over here. And then I'm laying my head bolts the way that they came out. And then I'll know that when I go to reinstall everything, it should all be the same. Now I'm taking these bolts out here for the exhaust. So things are starting to get a little loose. So to get that cover off, there was also two bolts down at the bottom here. And I've now got that little hot plate off. So now I'm gonna have to, what looks like, go to these bolts there, remove that. So once you get those bolts out there, the entire exhaust should be able to just pull it off just like that. So now, hopefully we have everything disassembled from our cylinder head. So you guys can see that's where the head gasket goes, right in there. So we have the cylinder head is loose now. Now it might be tricky, and I may have to remove these carburetor cables here, but what I'm gonna try to do is come in and pull away this way from my intake manifold, and then I can go and clean it up when it comes time for reassembly. So instead of removing the cable controls from up here, because that would be more work, I just went down and snipped the little zip tie. So now I should be able to pull the cables far enough out of the way to let me remove the cylinder head. Now, as I'm pulling up the cylinder head, because this engine isn't all that clean, there's probably going to be a bunch of debris going inside of the cylinder, so I'm going to have to clean that out later. But we now have our cylinder head off. So just looking at the cylinder head, you guys can see clear signs that it's been burning oil. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all of that up. And I'm going to show you a little trick to make sure that uh, those valves are seated. Even though we did a leak down test to the cylinder and we didn't hear any air coming from the exhaust or the intake, I'll still show you a little trick that I use just to uh, test to make sure that the valves are still seating good. We can see some clear signs of oil in the bottom right corner of the cylinder head here. And we can also see a chunk of what is the head gasket. But coming up to here, check this out. So right there, guys, right in the center of your screen, there's the blowout of the head gasket. So just like I suspected, what's happening is the air that we were putting in from our compressor into where the spark plug goes was filling the cylinder. And normally, if both valves are closed, only about 2% is supposed to bypass your piston rings and your cylinder and go down into the bottom end of the engine. But on this particular engine, because it has a blown head gasket, the air that we were putting into the cylinder was then escaping the cylinder and it was escaping right at that little tear there and going into where the lifters are. So these are your hydraulic lifters. So all of the air was going through here into this chamber and then back up to the top of our cylinder head through these ports here. And that's where we heard the air. Now I'm gonna have to remove that old head gasket, clean up the cylinder. Obviously there's a bunch of debris inside of the cylinder. Like I said, I'll clear that out. Make sure that no more debris goes in there. You guys can see that the intake gasket is torn. So I have a brand new one. Gonna probably be a little tricky to get a new one on without tearing it. This whole machine wasn't really designed to do a head gasket replacement on uh, this engine while it was installed. Normally you uh, remove the engine and then do a head gasket there. So in the end it can be done and I'm showing you how. Like I said it might not be the most uh, entertaining video but I wanted to document this process because I know my customer is going to probably watch this video in the near future once he gets this machine back. Now interestingly enough I believe one of the largest small engine repair shops around here actually turned this job down. If I remember correctly they said that the engine needed to be removed and that fixing it would cost around a thousand dollars. Now don't quote me on that but I believe that's what I was told so I'm just proving that it can in fact be done and taking you step by step through the process on how to do it. As for how much of this job will cost I'll reveal that at the end of this video series once it's all back together and running again. So we just got some parts in. I have the head gasket kit. I have the overhead valve cover and I have the rubber valve seal. So that's just the rubber cap that pops on top of the valve guide to help prevent oil 
seeping down the valve stem. I also purchased a brand new air filter from Stens and inside of this filter here, there's going to be another foam filter and this one was uh, okay. I didn't have to replace this. I blew this out. Absolutely no dust came out of here. The old one was packed full of dust and debris and sawdust and all kinds of leaf clippings. So we're going to replace that. We have two Champion RC12YC spark plugs that will be gapped to 30 thousandths of an inch. Additionally, we have a Stens oil filter, part number 120-523. We buy those by the box from Stens, so we never have to worry about running out. And with that, we have 1.8 liters of premium Quaker State 10W30 that we will be putting into this engine once everything's reassembled. So this machine will be completely serviced once it's ready to be returned back to the customer. Well, that wraps up today's video. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode where we clean up the cylinder head and prep the engine for the head gasket replacement. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.